Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to my room. So I didn't do a poll this week because I'm sure everybody wants me to talk about the Titan Submersible because it's literally been dominating the headlines and for good reason. However, I'm not going to talk about it because I think the whole thing was a distraction from the Hunter Biden story. The media, social media included, sends whatever it wants viral. Hunter Biden pled guilty to everything he was being accused of and got nothing more than a slap on the wrist. If he was truly innocent and had evidence for his innocence, he wouldn't have pled guilty. He would have fought it and he would have won. But he didn't even try to maintain his innocence because he's guilty as fuck. He was like, yeah, I did that shit. No jail time. So it's very clear that we have two different warring departments of justice, one for the left and one for the right. Donald Trump and Andrew Tate got the entire book thrown at him, but Hunter Biden got a toddler sentence and no one's mad enough about it because no one's talking about it. Why? Because everyone's talking about the Titan submersible. Every headline, every YouTuber, everyone everywhere was talking about this billionaire CEO and his ragtag team of diversity hires building this rinky-dink submersible at the Lego factory. Everybody's laughing at the Xbox controller and watching what happens for the entire week. It went missing. Shocker. Turns out it imploded. Shocker. Killing everybody on board instantly. And now that the cycle has completed for the week, they want to tell us that they found pieces of the craft. Yeah, all right. Turns out the Navy and the Coast Guard knew about the implosion the moment it happened. Back on like Monday. Why did they keep that a secret? Why did they perform an unnecessary search and rescue mission? Even the billionaire's son had a weird reaction to his dad being missing. The whole story is weird. And we would have never even heard about it if Hunter Biden wasn't going to trial in the same damn week. That's my theory. Not that the story was made up, I'm sure it actually happened, but the timing was weird, the coverage was weird, and I think the story only went viral in order to prevent Hunter Biden from going viral. So we're not going to talk about that today. You already talked about it. Shut up! So we're going to talk about the Riley Gaines story because this bitch never ceases to amaze me. She's doing amazing things, and she's currently going viral because she appeared in front of the Senate to combat men and women's sports, and she absolutely devastated everybody involved. And I mean, it's not hard to destroy any leftist argument regarding this nonsense because it is exactly that nonsense. All you have to do is show up with the facts and it'll blow any argument they have out of the water because they're banking on you being as uneducated as their core base. The less you know, the more they can fill your brain up with bullshit. So know the facts. Women, you don't some that believe are that a biological male has a physical advantage in sports over a biological female? Not as def a definitive statement. Now, I'm sure you've seen this person before. This is Kelly Robinson, the sitting president of the Human Rights Campaign, a queer woman, which again, queer is a slur. Queer means gay. I don't know why she didn't just say a lesbian. Hold on, what does queer mean to these idiots? Hold on, I need, I need to Google this shit real fast. Oh, okay. It means strange or odd. Yeah, she's definitely a strange woman. That much is definitely certain. Anyways, this is the clip that's going viral. Give me an example. Well, no, I, I don't think... How, 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 how many female members of the NBA do you see? Well, I can say that, you know, there's been this news article about men that think that they could beat Serena Williams in tennis, right? That they think that they could actually score a point on her. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right there, champ. Serena Williams said herself that she couldn't beat any of these dudes. Andy Murray, he oh, he was been joking about um, myself and him playing a match. And I'm like, Andy, seriously, like, are you kidding me? Because for me, tennis and men's tennis and women's tennis are completely almost two separate sports. So I'm like, if I were to play Andy Murray, I would lose. 6060 -oh, -oh in five to six minutes, maybe ten minutes, because it's no, it's any, true. It's honestly, true. It's a completely really. it's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster and me and um they they get they serve harder, they hit harder. It's just a different game. And I love to play women's tennis and I I only want to play girls because I don't want to be embarrassed. I would not do the tour, I wouldn't do Billy Jean any justice. So Andy, stop it. Yeah. We're not gonna I'm not gonna let you kill me. Male female. Male. Both Serena and Venus lost to the 203rd ranked male tennis player, which they're phenoms for women. Um, my experience, my husband, he swam at University of Kentucky as well. In terms of accolades and in terms of national ranking, I was a much better swimmer than him. Um, he could kick my butt any day of the week. The Williams sisters, at the peak of their career, were defeated by the ranked 203 in the world. Serena lost that match 6-1, to one, and then her sister lost 6-0. to zero. They were cocky, they said they could take any man ranked outside the top 200, and a player named Brosh, who was ranked 203, met that requirement, and thus accepted their challenge. He played both of them after a round of golf and a round of beer, accepted the challenge, went easy on them, and then defeated them both in back-to-back -back matches. 
He claims that he played like a rank 600 just to keep the match interesting, and that there was no way Serena would ever defeat the top 500 men, let alone the top 200. So listen to this. In early 1998, the Williams sisters were on the cusp of becoming international tennis stars, and this man, Karsten Brosh, was a fading tennis pro ranked 203 in the world with a funny serve whose training routine was described as being centered around a pack of cigarettes and more than a couple bottles of ice-cold lager. The association? During the 98 Australian Open, the Williams sisters brazenly claimed that they could be any man ranked outside the top 200 in rankings. Brosh, meeting this requirement, accepted the challenge and took them both on one afternoon after a round of golf and two beers. Alright, the result? Brosh beat Serena Williams in a set 6-1 before taking on sister Venus and beating her as well 6-2. Brosh later commented that there was no chance the sisters could be any man ranked in the top 500, and he played like someone ranked 600 just to keep the matches interesting. The Williams sisters would later revise their claim to being able to beat any man outside the top 350, though as it stands today, they have yet to accept any further male opponents. Debunked. So yeah, Riley Gaines wiped the floor with Demon Eyes over here, but that wasn't the only defining moment. This was a two hour hearing from what I understand. That was just the clip that went viral because Riley came with the facts. I want to touch on Josh Hawley because Hawley is a fucking champion. He brings up in the Senate hearing the amount of abuse Riley has been receiving and even put a picture up of the warm welcome that she received at San Francisco State University. And what you're about to see is the exact reason why blind activism is backfiring so tremendously. If you assault women just to protect the feelings of men, real men are gonna be fighting back. People double down in their convictions, myself included. It would be one thing if you showed up to a debate and tried to use facts and logic, but the violence that you exhibit in the name of your ideology only further solidifies the right in their beliefs that you're wrong. Violence is an idiot's way of solving problems. You can chant trans rights or human rights till you're blue in the face, but it doesn't give your statement meaning or make it correct. I could hold up a poster board that says a green sky is the real sky, and everyone would look at me like I'm fucking retarded because that's a retarded statement. Just like trans rights are human rights. It's a statement that means nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Ms. Gaines, I want to start with you. Thank you for your courage. Damn it, Josh Hawley uploaded videos in 480p. And being here today, thank you for your courage and advocacy for women. You have been subjected to an unbelievable amount of abuse. You talk about intimidation, threats of violence. You have suffered it. I want to put up here a picture so everybody can see it. This was the welcome you were treated to at San Francisco State University just a couple of months ago when a, a mob assembled where you were supposed to speak, I believe for over three hours, screamed, threatened you, barricaded you in a room. Do I have that basically correct? Yes. I was held for ransom for three and a half hours um, by hundreds of these protesters, as you see on the board. Um, they demanded that I had to pay them money if I wanted to make it home to see my family safe again. The law enforcement in San Francisco, um, I respect, and I think law enforcement is what's brave, not me, and I respect all law enforcement, but what I, the law enforcement I was met with in San Francisco, in my opinion, failed miserably in effectively doing their job. Um, they had mentioned that it was not ideal for them to be seen as anything other than an ally to this community. She said that even the police were in the Alphabet Mafia's back pocket. This is a mafia at this point. Organized crime groups pay off the cops so the police will turn a blind eye. Riley was invited to go there and speak. Activists rushed the room, turned off the lights, and started rushing to the front to hold her hostage. The moment she got punched in the face, the police should have been busting out tasers and downing people. They would do that to anybody else, but they gotta be an ally to the mafia. You can't convince me that this isn't an organized crime group at this point. I didn't even know that much this was news to me like you don't you don't cut the lights out if you're planning to be peaceful they went in there planning to hurt riley and the police stood by and did nothing for three hours it's disgraceful you cut the lights out to disorient your victim so while their eyes are adjusting to the dark they can't see the fist swinging at their face that's why you cut the light out before you attack every single one of these kids should be charged but they won't because they're allies to the trans community <laughs> Just tell us about your experience, because nobody can question your experience. I don't think anybody sitting at the, at, at the table, and certainly nobody at this podium, has had uh, the experience that you have had. You were talking about just the incredible surprise, shall I say, to put it gently, of finding a biological man, a six foot four biological man in your locker room and having to accept that without being asked about it, without being told about it even. What was that like for you? Tell us about that. I 
Again, we only became aware we would be undressing next to a man was when we had to see a man undressing while we were simultaneously undressing. And so I immediately left the locker room and I went up to one of the officials on the pool deck and I said, what are the guidelines to allow a man into our locker room? I know the guidelines for the competition, but what are the guidelines for the locker room? And he so nonchalantly said back, oh, we actually got around this by making locker rooms unisex. And so I'm thinking to myself in these brief moments, first and foremost, you just admitted this is a male by acknowledging how you had to change your rules to make the locker rooms unisex. You acknowledge that we do not share the same sex, first and foremost. Secondly, unisex? Any man could have walked into our locker room, any coach, any official, any man who wanted to would have had full reins to and bare minimum we weren't forewarned about it. And that's, that's the traumatizing part. Of course, the experience in and of the locker room itself is traumatizing, but I think for me, it was so easy for them to dismiss our rights to privacy. Um, Senator Durbin, in, in your opening statement, you had mentioned this rhetoric. It's, um, you had mentioned that, what message does it send to trans individuals? And my combat to that is what message does this send to women, to young girls who are denied of these opportunities? So easily their rights to privacy and safety thrown out of the window to protect a small population, protect one group as long as they're happy? What about us? That is the overall general consensus of how we all felt in that locker room. Why do you, why do you think it is that the, the NCAA and so many people in power seem intent on just erasing your opinion, your views, the whole category of women? I noticed that recently you just posted this to social media about a message that Harvard was sending around, I think, to its swimmers telling them, don't talk about Leah Thomas, don't share your opinions. If you get contacted by a member of the media, then refer that to the university. Don't say anything, for heaven's sake. Tell us about this. I mean, this has been your experience over and over and over. You're told as a woman to shut up, don't say anything. What's that like? That is continually happening. And if we do speak up, you're immediately labeled as some, as some name. They will call you everything under the sun, whether it's transphobic, homophobic, racist, white supremacist, domestic terrorists. They will throw them all at you in hopes to deter you, in hopes to silence you. Um, Leah Thomas's teammates, they were forced every single week to go to mandatory LGBTQ education meetings to learn about how just by being cisgender, they were oppressing Leah Thomas. They were told that they are not allowed to take a stance because their school has already taken their stance for them. They were told that you will never get a job, you will never get into grad school, you will lose your friends, you will lose your scholarship and playing time if you speak out. They told these girls that if you do speak out, and any harm whatsoever comes towards Thomas's way, whether that's through social media, whether that's physical, mental, emotional harm, then you are solely responsible and you could be responsible for a potential death. And you don't want that, do you? Of course not. Who would ever want to be responsible in a potential death? But that is the emotional blackmail that is plaguing this country, especially in universities. Last question, and I'll, just, I'll ask this and then give you a chance to respond, and I'm, I'm done with this, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me give you a chance to respond to something that Leah Thomas said recently, publicly. This is, um, she said this publicly. They're using, this quote now, they're using the guise of feminism, they meaning you, using the guise of feminism to sort of push transphobic beliefs, meaning you advocating for women, women's rights, is actually just a cover for transphobia. Do you want to respond to that? Feminism is not a fluid term. Um, the original and the meaning of what it means to be a feminist is to uphold, respect, honor, embrace, and celebrate women on our own physical ceilings, our own uniqueness. That term has not changed. Um, and what this really is is a, is a male mansplaining what it is to be a feminist, which I honestly think is pretty ironic and it's something we've seen before. Damn! <laughs> This is a man mansplaining what it means to be- God damn, that got, that got me hyped. That got me hyped. That was a headshot right there. Damn! Excellent line of questioning by Josh Hawley. Excellent responses from Riley Gaines. I love following her story because she's going everywhere battling idiocracy. By the way, if you haven't seen the movie Idiocracy, you need to watch it right now. I'll forgive you for turning off this video as long as you're watching Idiocracy. Excellent performance by Riley Gaines. If you guys want to see the full thing, I'll put a link in the description. It's a two hour hearing and there was a lot to cover, but I didn't want to turn this into a four hour video while I comment on everything. But if you made it this far into the video, you get a bonus. I'm going to show you a rematch between 
between Riley Gaines and William Thomas, where Riley actually defeated William, and then all the girls on the team rushed to congratulate Riley, and Thomas got completely sidelined, completely ignored. They pretended like he didn't even exist. And you know what? Welcome to womanhood, quote unquote, Leah. You see, being a man is pretty straightforward. You step out of line, you get punched in the face. But women fight in a completely different way. And William is about to learn how cold women can actually get. Anyways, enjoy this clip. Representing Stanford Taylor. <laughs> representing Pennsylvania, Leah Thomas. Like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And you can go to my Patreon to sign up to become a member. It's the number one way to support the channel. Or you can go to either of my other channels to check out some video games that I'm developing. Or to check out any tunes that I make in between projects. And I'll see you in the next video. I've been riding around town, blowing loud with the window down. Oh shit. New phone, who this? I'm just steady winning, you can't even hurt my feelings, homie, oh shit New phone, who this? You can't ever slow me, half of y'all don't even know me, homie, oh shit New phone, who this? Don't you dare try to call me, cause I'm introverted, homie, better text me that shit New phone, who this?